right, so we're gonna take a look at I have my work in progress. It's a container pond that has an aquaponics set up with it. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at it. This thing is, I think it's six feet long, six and a half feet long by two, two and a half feet, and uh, it's uh, two feet, two and a half feet deep, something like that. As you can see in here, there's uh, I've got a couple different kinds of lilies. There's tropical lilies, and there's also some uh, hardy lilies in here, like the more round ones are the hardy lilies, and then the the uh, elephant ear looking ones are tropical and I've got some curly leaf water lettuce over on this side and over here there's some variegated water lettuce it's a little hard to tell it's uh, just got out of shipping so it's uh, not in the best shape then also some mosaic plant which is Ludwigia sedioides and uh, lilies are blooming up back over there there's a little hornwort back there some baby tears that are just kind of floating and doing their thing. Right now, in the down in the pond, I've got some um, there's some guppies in there. I think there's a molly, and there's about a dozen koi in there, and they're not staying in here long term. They're just going to be in here for probably a couple months, and I'm going to end up selling them. So this isn't really a long term home for them. It's really not big enough, but. It works good for now because I need something to generate a lot of waste and koi and goldfish seem to be great at that. Um, there's a couple different kinds of koi. There's um, some of the platinum ogon and then also some of the yamabuki which are like the uh, the golden color ones. And then there's some butterfly koi also. They're a little skittish. They're still new so I don't expect them to be super friendly yet. But they're... Uh, kind of hanging down there at the bottom you can kind of see them I freak out every time I move anyway so that's the koi and they look pretty cool I'm probably gonna bring I've got one in my pond up front also that I'm probably gonna put in here once I can catch him he's just really fast um, as for the plants the um, I've got some of our carnivorous stuff over here is all looking pretty good for the most part. It died a little back a little bit on, over the winter, and I haven't clipped it down yet. I'm just kind of leaving it alone. We got some snow peas growing over here in just this little window box. Put it like a little trellis, made a little trellis for it so they can have somewhere to grow up to. And then there's some oregano in a pot right here, which is not attached to the system. And then this grow bed. Um, I actually will look at this other one first. This one's not done yet. I just, uh, I'm just making sure it's not leaking and I've still got to get gravel for it. It rained really hard yesterday and it kind of messed up my, some of my cilantro and the stuff I had in these seedling trays. Um, some of it looks like it'll recover, but a lot of it got kind of beat up and I'm going to transfer it as soon as I get some gravel into this grow bed. I haven't done it yet, but... These grow beds are actually uh, cattle feed, cattle bunk feeders, and they're made of plastic. Uh, you can get them at most feed stores. They're pretty heavy duty. They seem to be holding up really well. They're like 100 to 120 dollars a piece. They're 10 feet long, and I think they're about a foot and a half wide. And they're, I think they're about eight to 10 inches deep. So they're pretty cool. Um, I've got on this side. I've got some banana plants. These are dwarf bananas, Cavendish banana plants. I don't sell these just because I don't want to ship them, but I can sell them if you're local, so just let me know. And there's a chameleon plant down there, which is going to take over everything probably. We've got some kale, uh, or actually Swiss chard. we got, this is rainbow chard right here. It's looking really good. I just got it in a net pot, and I don't have, I don't even have grow media in there. I just got, um, just a little bit of uh, just that clay-based um, gravel, like safety sorb type stuff. And it works pretty good. I just didn't have any rock wool, so um, this is red romaine. This is all looking really good. And I've been harvesting off this stuff and feeding the guinea pigs and rabbit with it, but a lot of the stuff got knocked over last night in that storm. It's 
Still looks really healthy though. And this is all aquaponic. Uh, I'm not dosing any fertilizers apart from uh, I've been putting some seaweed extract in. That's bas basically it. Some strawberries here, and they're they look like they're growing pretty good. They got a, a couple, couple going. It's a banana plant over there. There's uh, another red romaine right here. This is actually called a plantain, a red plantain plant, and it's not related to the banana plantain, but it's a um, kind of a bog weed type plant, uh, green that is edible. So, and it's growing really well uh, since I put it in here. It actually, these smaller leaves are what it was like inside the greenhouse in the grow bed with no fertilizer. And now that we've got it in this system, it's really taken off. So, the uh, pets are going to love that. I think this is a posy petunia. It's just, just regular petunias. They got pretty beat up. Um, I got a couple different kinds of tomatoes, and they're planted really close. Um, I may end up moving them, spreading them out some, but... I just stuck them in there for now and I put it like a little trellis thing over it and I'm going to try to keep them away from each other but I've got three different kinds of tomatoes going in here there's cherries over here and then in the middle there's like the there's the heirloom Cherokee tomatoes and then on this end we've got the early girl tomatoes which all look like they're doing really good they they're starting to put um, flowers out so I may may not pinch them off I kind of like the size of this these plants so I may just leave them as is. Got another strawberry over here, and this is the gravel at, into the grow bed. As you can see, one thing I did differently here was um, I split this thing half and half. I've got floating raft on this side. This is just two inch um, styrofoam, and then I split it and I put a uh, thing of egg crate, the lighting, the louver stuff. Let's put it right across and then silicone it in place. And I actually put a um, some of that, um, gosh, I can't remember the name, um, plastic mesh canvas across it just to keep the rocks from getting over to the other side. And then just filled this side up with rocks. It's bowing a little bit, but it's actually been holding pretty well. So uh, it's worked out pretty cool. And it was kind of just a hybrid between, the, between an, like an ebb and flow or a constant flood and a deep water culture. So that's kind of cool. It's working out really well. I'm not doing that with the other one. I'm just going to go all, all gravel because it seems like this is one of the easiest ways for me to do it. I like just planting them straight in there and not worrying about the net pots and all that stuff. Um, over here we've got more peppers. These are banana peppers. And yeah, these are, these are both bananas. I think that I've got, oh, this is the poblano ancho chili pepper plant right here. Uh, a strawberry we saw earlier. And this one, if you can look at it, it... It looks like it has a defici deficiency, and so does this one, and obviously those two right there that died back. But I think that what happened, because like, I was worried about them not having enough fertilizer last week, because I had not yet put any fish into the system. And uh, so I went ahead and put some root tabs in by the roots, and I think that I did a little too much, because the very next day they showed like this really, like they started losing leaves, and they started getting all beat up so I'm, I'm guessing they actually had too many fertilizers so I just rinsed them really thoroughly and I'm hoping that they recover and it looks like they're most of them are going to so that's cool um, this is another pepper this is uh, oh, what is this oh this is actually pimento pepper I like the stuff that comes in olives so I got some of those this is a jalapeno this one that's all kind of mangled maybe it'll come back I don't know it's we'll see um, and I've got over here, I just transplanted these because these were actually over by the tomatoes, which is a really bad place for them. Uh, these are cucumbers. These are pickling cucumbers, so they're, they're going to stay small. And as you can see, I didn't even really mess with them too much straight out of the pot. I just kind of picked them up and stuck them in here just like that. And um, I just built this little trellis thing to go over so they kind of have somewhere to grow away from all the other stuff. So hopefully they grow up and they grow well like that. That's basically it. Um, I've just got a I've got a deep blue Triton water pump down in there that pumps water up and then into this filter. This is a 30 gallon um, plastic barrel and this is an upflow sand filter. And um, 
it has uh, big rocks in the bottom and then it graduates to sand as you go up so it just catches all the dirt and particulate and gives it a good and there's a good bed for biological activity so um, the, yeah this tube actually goes down in to the very bottom and um, then it disperses and it actually disperses in kind of a, like a circular manner so it's similar to a swirl filter on the bottom and then I've got a little bit of space and then I have the rocks up above that so it sort of works as a swirl filter and so I've got a drain down here so if I ever want to uh, see if there's any gunk or anything in here I just kind of open this up and then yeah see how there's like gunk coming out so it does a pretty good job of trapping some of the bigger solids and then um, I got a couple things growing like taro and stuff growing out of this uh, there's also another little cap right here and that just allows me to stick a, a vacuum like a blower blower hose like air pump hose down into that and blow air into it and that actually is a good way to get all the dirt and stuff that's lodged in here into this filter to get it all kind of washed out and it's not it's something you do like maybe once a season or twice a season so it's not like a a common thing but it's just there for that reason so yeah so that's that and uh, I guess if you have any questions comments suggestions I'm gonna put a cover on this um, soon I just have to make something up but yeah I mean I know the stuff's planted pretty close but I'm kind of just whatever about it at this point and just kind of testing out to see how things are gonna go so yeah let me know what you think and see you later